Hi, I'm Three Gnomes, an indie game developer currently working on a horror-based 3D platformer called Toby's Topsy Tail. In my last video, I made it so that the main character Toby can move around and a camera will move around him. I also worked with animations for the first time and made a cookie and a coin spin. Finally, I created a very simple little character and gave it two animations. One, a basic idol, and the other for when your character collides with him. So, the first thing I wanted to do next was make a little more complicated character to put in the game. So I decided to create Tilly the Turnip. Tilly would have three animations, an idol, a hit, and a death. And this is just so I could get a little more practice with the system. Next up was the process of importing him into Unity. Once there, I gave him the basics he would need as an enemy, a rigid body and a collider. I then made his animation controller and attached an animator component to him. However, of course, it wasn't working the first time. I realized that the problem I was having was because I had attached the animator component to the empty that he was a child of. So I took it and attached it directly to his model, and sure enough, it was working perfectly. Well, not perfectly. For some reason, the looping of the animation was very wonky. After fiddling with the animations for a little bit, I realized that the problem came from the way that I had done things in Blender. You see, in Blender, anything you put before the zero is just not going to show up in the render. However, when you import it to Unity, it just makes an animation out of every single mark that you've made in the timeline. I fiddled with the animation frame count for a while before realizing I could pretty much just hit loop pose and it would work automatically. Now that I had the idle animation going, I decided to play around a little bit and see how it looked, and I realized quickly that when you bump into the character, you can essentially just move it based on the rigid body settings that I had. And it looked pretty ridiculous, honestly. I messed around with it a little bit, and then I went on to testing how the other animations looked in the software. That being the hit by the player animation and the death animation, which honestly kind of broke my heart to look at. After bringing her back to life, I now had all the animations set up. At this point, she was pretty much done, but I wanted to give her that sparkle in her eyes. Uh, literally. I essentially wanted to make a specular map so that her eyes would be reflective and the rest of it would be kind of more of a matte texture, like what you see here. I thought that would just give her a little more pop and make her feel more alive and fun to look at. Finally, being pretty much satisfied with my turnip, I decided to turn my attention to two other problems I had been looking to address. First of all, the camera that rotated around Toby I thought was way too close on him. It kind of felt claustrophobic now that there were other enemies around. I decided I would fix this by extending the radius on the middle rig of the camera. Secondly, I felt like the grass in this part of the fridge world was way too long. It felt unnatural and unkempt, and this area is supposed to be clean and nice. So I just trimmed it down to a smaller height, and with these two fixes in place, I thought the game was already looking a lot better. Since I was already in the settings for the camera, I decided to fix a problem I outlined in the last video, which is that the camera can currently go through objects and even the terrain. Thankfully, there was an extension built directly into Cinemachine that takes care of this for me. And so with that in place, I decided to start testing it. On a base level, it did pretty much exactly what I wanted it to do. However, anytime anything came between the player and the camera, it would jump around to make it work. This seemed very unnatural, especially in situations where the camera is only blocked for about a fraction of a second. It would still jump forward. It, it was very disorienting. So in the settings, I messed with a couple things that seemed to fix that. First of all, I made a slight delay where the camera has to be blocked for a fraction of a second before it'll activate and fix the problem. That makes it so that when you're just spinning the camera around the character, you don't have to worry about a small thing just being right in the way and it jumping forward. I also made the settings so that there was also a smooth, quick transition from the place where it's blocked to the place where it's going. This made it feel less jumpy and like it was naturally moving to the place it needed to be. Finally, I made this entire extension not be affected by objects that are a certain closeness to the character, so that if an enemy is right next to you when you're about to hit it, the camera won't jump between you and the enemy. It'll move smoothly around them because the enemy is right next to you. All in all, I think this fixed all of the camera problems that I had, and it finally felt like I had a smooth system in place. At this point, I set my sights on something I knew would be a lot more complicated. The health system. To give a very brief overview, essentially what I did was create an FSM called health, which would start with waiting for an enemy to hit, and then when an enemy collided, it would look at the variable created attached to the enemy that determines how much damage it deals to your character, and then it would reduce that amount of damage from your health, leaving your current health at whatever it should be. After that, all of this would loop again and again until your current health finally hits zero, and then it would go to the dead state. I also added some things that would affect the player when they take damage, such as being knocked backwards and blinking momentarily, as well as not being able to take additional damage for a few seconds. With everything finally set up, I popped into the game to give it a try, and it worked perfectly. I'm just kidding, it didn't work at all. 
This was mainly just because I had attached the rigid body and the capsule collider to the empty, the same as I had done with the animator, so I simply had to move those down to the actual turnip model. After that, it was actually working. Clunky, but it worked. Now it was time to fine tune these issues. Problem number one was that when you collided with the enemy, it wouldn't knock you back in relation to yourself, it would just alter your numerical position on the X and Z scale by negative five. The blinking effect was entirely too long, as was the length of time you were invulnerable to damage. And finally, nothing really happened when you died, except that you could no longer move. I started by shortening the length that the character blinked and the amount of time that they were invulnerable. Then I altered the knockback effect, where when you take damage, you are pushed backwards in relation to your your own orientation. I would come back to what happens when you die later, because right now I was motivated to make a health bar. First, I took the candy cane health bar image that I had previously created and put it on the UI canvas so that it would constantly be at the top left of the screen. Then I created a slider that would erase it in chunks from the right over, and I used an FSM to attach that to the value of your current health. So when your current health is at four, the slider is at four, which is full. And then when your current health goes down to say two, the slider goes down to two, showing the health bar at half. At this point, I had it functional, but I didn't like how it just kind of disappeared. I wanted it to look like the candy bar was breaking apart and emptying out as the health bar depleted. To do that, I made a second image, which was essentially a hollowed out, broken version of the candy cane, and put that underneath so that as the slider depleted, it would look like the candy cane was hollowing out. And honestly, I absolutely loved how this turned out. It was the exact feeling I was going for for this game. And finally, it felt like I had a real game that I had made and that I was playing. The final thing I wanted to do before I took a break was make something actually happen when you die. I decided to go the simple route and make it so that when you entered the dead state, the camera would fade out to a dark red, a kind of bloody feel. It's not perfect and there's a lot more work to do, but I was happy with the progress that I had made. Make sure to let me know in the comments below any thoughts you had on the project, and if you're interested in following the progress of this game, make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss anything. Also, make sure you comment down below anything you think I should work on next. Thank you for watching, and I'm not gonna do my stupid sign-off this time. Bye, guys. That was my phone. It's the Yoshi. It's the Yoshi tongue sound effect. That's, that's, that's definitely not a good sign-off. <laughs>